Hi, today we're going to talk about how to use the new night mode features in TPE 3.4 for iOS. To get started, let's go somewhere that has dark skies. If you want to photograph the, the night sky in the Milky Way, that's certainly what you're going to need. So I'm going to start over at Kielder Observatory in the north of England. Uh, it has some of the darkest skies in in England, uh, so it seems a good place to start. First thing I'll show you is how to enable night mode. Tap the date at the top of the screen. You see the new mode controls at the top there above the selected date and the list of events. Tap the one on the right, the moon and the stars, and you're in night mode. If you want to switch back, tap the date. Tap the sun on the left and you're in day mode. Simple as that. So, in night mode, the first thing that uh, you need to know is uh, that the the time period that is displayed is switched rather than running from midnight to midnight it runs from midday to midday so the focus on the timeline and the chart at the bottom is over the, the night hours it's pretty clear when you're in night mode you can see here that uh, all the colors have changed into this palette of blues and silvers and grays etc um, rather than day mode so you shouldn't have any uh, mistake seeing which mode you're in at any time uh, when I adjust the time of day and we get into the really dark hours of the night, uh, you'll see that the stars and the Milky Way uh, appear. And I'll talk a little bit more about what, what you're seeing there. Um, one other thing to note is that the, uh, the, the information on the timeline, we're not showing the sun when we're in night mode. We're focused on the, the moon and the Milky Way. And in particular, uh, you'll see that we've got a few extra events showing up here. There's things called GC Rise, GC Transit, GC Set. I'll talk about what those, those are. Um, remember that uh, both in day mode and night mode, uh, they're now separate settings, but if you double tap the timeline, you get to choose the information that you want to see. Essentials is the minimum. All is everything. Uh, default is is a, a middle set. I'll go into all. When you're in all, uh, that's when you'll see these transit uh informations as, as well. Um, so why is the Milky Way represented as this band of spheres? Um, well, as you probably know, the galaxy, a spiral galaxy, it's mostly flat with a bulge in the center, and Earth orbits the Sun, and the Sun lives towards one of the outer edges of the Milky Way, but not at the edge, so that if you were able to see in all directions around the Earth, you'd see that we're surrounded by a band of, of stars that represent the densest region of, of our own galaxy. Um, so that's what this symbolic representation of spheres uh, is. You see how it goes uh, brighter and larger towards the southwest um, at this particular time and location. Uh, those brighter spheres represent the galactic center, so the middle of the Milky Way. That's the brightest part. It's probably the part you must want to photograph. It's the most photogenic. And uh, that's what the GC abbreviation stands for. So when you see GC rise, GC transit, GC set, tap GC set, galactic center set. So that's the moment where the center of the galaxy will cross beneath the local horizon. Horizon being the ideal horizon, free of any obstructions such as buildings, mountains, ridgelines, and, and so forth, as, as usual. So you can see how the stars move as I change the time of day back and forth. You'll see that they fade in and out, and that's based on visibility of you know where the sun is. So once you get into the twilight and the daylight hours, you can't see the stars. So. As, as you know, you can't see the Milky Way either. Um, it's the center of the, the galaxy is not always visible. Um, so the farther north you go, uh, it, it, beyond 60 degrees north, you'll never see it because of the orientation of the Earth versus uh, the, the plane of the galaxy. Southern Hemisphere fares a lot better. Also then in moderate northern latitudes, you'll only see it during the summer. You won't see it in the winter. Uh, so just be aware of that. You're not always going to see those um, those larger white uh, spheres of the, of the galactic center. So let me go to a photograph, which was taken by uh, Eric Stensland, who's a great photographer based up in Estes Park in Colorado, and photographs a lot of uh, shots around Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, 
in here in Colorado. This shot was taken in uh, late July of this year, and it shows the stars and the band of the Milky Way that you can see running diagonally across across the frame there, um, from top left to mid right. And the brightest part of the galaxy, the galactic center, is is shown there. Uh, towards the, the middle right of, of the shot. So let's see if we can recreate this in TP so you can see uh, how things line up having looked at that shot. So let's come back to the app. Let's go to, I saved the location before, it's Mills, Mills Lake. I'm going to switch to terrain maps just so you can see it a little bit more clearly. And there we go. So there is uh, the lake and the shot was actually taken looking south um, through this valley and the ridge that you saw illuminated by the moon on the left uh, is is shown there. Let me get the right date. So it was July 22nd, July 22nd. There we go. And it was taken at I think around 10.50 in the evening. So I'm going to just choose the transit there, which is about 10.47, and then I can just adjust the time here, 10.51, I think it was. And indeed, you can see that if you're looking south, the brightest part of the Milky Way is sitting up there, um, just off to the right of your line of sight as you, as you look more or less due south through this valley. Um, we can adjust the... Um, viewpoint here so that you can get a better better sense of that. Um, let me first of all I'm going to rotate the map so that we're sort of looking the same way as the photograph. There we are. So now we're looking south and I'm also going to tilt the map like that. So you can get a sort of a 3D sense of, of where this thing is sitting. And indeed there off Due to off to our right, which is west, there's the moon, uh, not too far from from setting in the west, but still high enough to eliminate the ridge, and there's the centre of the Milky Way. So that 3D view can be helpful just to get a sense of where things are really gonna gonna sit. So one thing that you probably noticed is there are a few lines um, that are drawn on the map. And one of them uh, leads from the red pin up to the galactic center. That's the one uh, that I'll highlight in the video. Another one runs essentially through the line where the uh, the Milky, the band of the Milky Way intersects with the horizon. And so, if you want to see the band of the Milky Way rising out of the horizon, or maybe behind a, a building or a, a mountain peak, um, that that horizon intersection line uh, is where you would you would look. So let's go. I'll go due north again, and I'll come with the overhead view. So a few other things to point out. We've got a lot of the brightest stars in some of the major constellations shown, and you can probably recognise a few of these. Um, what you need to imagine is you're in a planetarium. Um, but it's a transparent planetarium and you get to fly outside it looking in. That's essentially what we're looking at. There's a, a dome of stars overlaid on the map around the red pin. And you can see up to the northwest, uh, the, the plow or the Big Dipper, uh, depending on uh, wh where you live, what you might call it, Ursa Major, formerly. Um, if I go to a different time of year, we're going to see different uh, constellations. So if I go to, let's say, October, and then just change the time of day there. We can see coming into view in the southeast, there's Orion, probably one of the most recognizable constellations with the belt um, and the four bright uh, corner stars there. So uh, if you know the night sky very well, you'll probably recognize a whole bunch of these different constellations as you look around. Um, and they're really there for you know to orient you around what you're seeing in, in the night sky um, to supplement the the band of the of the Milky Way. You may have noticed also the the uh, symbol P that sits due north, and that is indeed uh, due north because it's the pole star Polaris, and 
typically that's the direction which you'd want to shoot if you were photographing star trails uh, in the northern hemisphere. So find your star photos to Polaris, um, so barely moved, so everything is written around that. It's very close to Polaris is the true uh, line of the between the galactic north and south pole, so the axis of rotation, if you will. So one place I'd like to show you is uh, Southern Hemisphere locations. Let's go to Uluru in Australia. It's a, a good night sky location. I think satellite modes pro maps are probably good for this. And just so we have a bit more room, I'm going to clear the buttons out. And I'm also going to swipe down the timeline uh, so you get a bit more screen space. And a few things that we'll see here we are at night. In the Southern Hemisphere, things I want to point out to you. First of all, we show Polaris Australis uh, to the south, which is the Southern Pole Star. And you can also see that axis that I mentioned just before. Um, the, gal the, the, the constellation, which is just inside the belt of the Milky Way, to the left of Polaris Australis is the Southern Cross, which is one of the best known uh, constellations in the Southern Hemisphere. So that's there for your um, orientation as well. And you can see here a bunch of the brighter stars and there's Orion, um, different orientation from this part of the world. And of course, if you want to see the angle to the Southern Pole Star or, or the Northern Pole Star, one of the things you can do is uh, We'll zoom in a little bit and with two fingers tilt the map, rotate it around and there you can get a much better sense of the angle um, in the sky that the, the pole star was lying at. So it's relatively far south, well not south, it is south, uh, it's not that high in the sky as you can see by that angle um, uh, from the, the 3D view. So that's uh, night mode, we hope you enjoy it. Um, if you have any suggestions for improvement or other features you'd like to see, let us know at support at photoephemeris.com and we hope you enjoy using the new features.